Hey everyone, welcome back. We're continuing our journey through the MCU with Thor. If I recall correctly, when this one came out, it didn't do as well as the other ones, as the other origin stories. But I always found this movie to be very enjoyable. I thought the acting was very good and I enjoyed the story. While it was a bit predictable, I still thought it was a very fun ride and the characters were uh, were very fun to watch. I like this movie. It's very and, – and Griff, help me out with the director's name because I always screw up his name. I know he is because <laughs> he's an actor, and he, he's been in a lot of stuff. He's done some – Kenneth Branagh. There you go. I, I always I, – I, his last name is what I always screw up. But when I heard it was him, I was like, mm, okay. And when I heard his pitch, I was like, okay, cool. Then the cast – I didn't know Chris Hemsworth from – anything I'd, I'd never seen this dude I, i'd never seen the dude that plays loki anywhere the the ones that i did know uh were the director my 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 future wife natalie portman <laughs> and of course sir anthony hopkins but, but anything that you put anthony hopkins in, so i was like oh okay cool i mean he's i was like wow he's playing um odin oh shit all right i'm i'm watching and uh this movie's really cool my dad is actually a giant Thor fan. So he was very excited to, to, to go watch this movie. Um, I think it was one of the first comics. My dad was really into Thor and Fantastic Four. So it, it was exciting to go see this. And I really like the relationship between Thor and his dad. Yeah, that was really like Thor's relationship with a lot of these characters is really interesting because this is a very emotionally young Thor. He hasn't been through that much. He's had everything handed to him. And then watching him go and lose everything and then try to get everything back, I just thought was a really good story. It's it's the basic Thor origin. But I think the way they did it here, I liked it more than I did with what they did for the original comic. I don't I don't know, like, I can't really put my finger on it. It just felt a lot more emotional. Yeah. Like, watching him go to the hammer, losing it, like, it not choosing him, and then still fight at the end. I thought that was, it was just surprisingly an emotional movie. I think, and I've I heard and saw interviews with Stan Lee talk about this movie, and he, he said he cried when he saw Asgard because it it was, you know, it it was designed by, you know, Jack Kirby. And when he saw it, he was like, it's, it's exactly what Jack and I spoke about. So that, I thought that was really cool. It was gorgeous. Every single time we see Asgard, it's, it's gorgeous. The wardrobe in this movie is, is, is is amazing. Like I, I, I vividly remember my dad saying he looks just like in the comics. That's, that's what Thor's supposed to look like. I'm like, well, yeah, they, they, these Marvel movies have gotten it more right than most movies have. Um, if you remember the original X-Men movies, they were just like wearing like <laughs> black leather for some fucking reason that they yeah. were just all in black leather. They all look the same here. Thor has his cape. He has those, you know, shiny ball things on his chest. He has his helmet. My dad was a little bummed that he didn't wear his helmet. I, I understood why that thing looks like it's a little heavy and kind of gets in the way. Uh, but Odin's wearing his helmet. Odin looks Anthony Hopkins, everything that man does is Shakespearean as hell. He was, he was still underutilized even in this movie. Like, it, Odin was more or less just a minor role, but he, he nailed it. When he speaks, you know, it's Anthony Hopkins, Denzel Washington, and Sir Ian McKellen. When those guys speak, they could say, I don't know, they could be giving you the recipe for meatballs, and, and you'd listen. Yeah. And the action in this movie is really good. I also really like the dynamic between... Thor and his brother. Thor loves his brother. It's usually the older brother who's kind of a dick to the younger brother. Thor really loves his brother. Here, it's the younger brother who's just a crazy prick. Yeah, I do think that, as we've seen, that Thor did tend to bully Loki a little bit. Just make like he was usually like the butt of the jokes at some, uh, for some points. But that's just how Thor showed his love. I don't know if Loki truly understood that. But the dynamic between those two was really great to watch and i like the warriors three i like the warriors three in this movie even though like the roles were pretty minor i liked the costume designs i thought there were they were funny and 
they were powerful. I'm a little disappointed they were killed off so quickly in Thor Ragnarok. This movie started off well, and I I like everything from this movie. I like the dynamic. I like uh, Natalie Portman's character because in the original comics, she's, I, I bl- correct me if I'm wrong, Griff. I think she's like a paramedic or a, or a nurse. I think so. She works. She works with Donald Blake, I believe. Right. Yeah. And and so here, like she's like some sort of physics expert and stuff like that and it just like makes sense like if, if she was just a paramedic I, I just don't see now having seen this movie so many times I don't understand like why her and Thor would interact other than like maybe he saved her or something but she's smart you can buy that Natalie Portman is a is smart as smart as Jane is supposed to be in the in the movie I buy Chris as Thor he just he, he looks at uh, Thor he looks really young here um, as opposed to when you see him later on, because of course he's aged. You buy that rebellious, bratty kid who has had everything, and he's a prince who wants to be king. That that speech when him and his dad really get into, it, and his dad like essentially, you know, sends him to Earth. You could feel that Odin. You could feel that Odin didn't want to say those words to his son, but his son's being a dick. Say what you will about Endgame, the arc that Thor has gone through without the MCU, I still think is really well written he's had everything taken from him and yet he still tries to be a hero and i th- i think he's one of the better written characters in the mcu yeah i i agree with you 100 percent. i think his story arc is so rich he goes from being this shitty obnoxious kid who just thinks that he's you know the best for everyone to sacrificing himself essentially exactly and caring he cares more about when we start the movie, he doesn't care about anything except being king and ruling and, and showing off. And, and, and by the time we get to the end of the movie, without going into spoilers, he cares. He cares about everything, he, more so than he does himself. He cares about his dad, his mom, this new love interest. And I like that. You, you, he, he grew in one movie, he grew. And he continues to grow until we get to three and four. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and join us next week for the Avengers. Take care, guys.